So far we've looked at unwrapping this cube contraption and we've looked at unwrapping Suzanne. So now it's time to take it up a notch and unwrap a little more complex object like this shader orb here that Kent has modeled. So I'm going to select it and hit slash on my number pad to look right at it and hit tab to go into edit mode. First of all, you'll notice that there are already some seams on here and that's because Kent did unwrap it, but I reset the UVs because of course that would defeat the purpose of this exercise if we started out already finished. So what I'm going to do is right click with everything selected and clear seam to get rid of all of them. Now in the previous video, we enabled a couple options. One of them is live unwrap in both the 3D view here and also in the UV editor, live unwrap. And we need both of those on while we're unwrapping if we want to get that live feedback. We also need to enable sync selection over here in the top left of the UV editor. And these are options that I recommend keeping off most of the time when you're manipulating your UVs and moving your islands around. But while you're in the process of unwrapping itself, then they can be incredibly helpful. So we're gonna be using them for a little bit, but then once we're actually finished with our UVs, we need to make sure to turn them off. Now this is a bit more of a complex object, but if you followed along with unwrapping Suzanne, then it shouldn't be too intimidating. The first thing I'm going to do though is select this sphere here because it's using a different material and doesn't really need to be UV unwrapped. So I'm just going to not worry about it. I'm going to hit Control and L to select everything there. And then since these faces are kind of taking up the entire view here, I'm going to scale them down really, really small and just put them off to the side. So we can just forget about them for now. Then what I'm going to do is hit H in the 3D view to hide that part of the mesh. That way we don't need to look at it and it's not going to be taking up any of our space. And now it's time to get unwrapping. First, let's unwrap the main portion of this mesh. That would be this ball here. And right now you can see there's a lot of stretching going on uh, that starts out right here in the center. It starts out where the grid is very, very small, which means it's really, really big in the UV editor. And then it gets to where the grid is huge over here to where it's really, really small. Uh, in the UV editor, you can see that that's all the way down here. So we definitely need to split this up into different islands to allow it to spread out more evenly. The first thing I'm going to do is create a cut that separates the top from the bottom, and that just gives them a little bit more breathing room to work with. So I'm gonna place a cut right here in the middle. I'll Alt select this edge loop, right click and mark seam. Since we have live unwrap enabled, that's automatically going to pack our islands for us and separate these out. So now our top has a little bit less stretching than the bottom, it's looking a little bit better, uh, but there's still a good ways to go here. Now there's definitely going to be some stretching here because it's trying to take this and just make it into a circular form, and that just doesn't work. And we can actually see the stretching if we hit N to go to our sidebar and go to View. Uh, this option is a little bit hidden, but if we go to Overlays under Display and turn on Stretching, then we're going to be able to see how much our faces and vertices are stretching. Hey, another update from Future Me. So in Blender 2.9 to Alpha and later, the UV editor now has its own overlays menu. So no longer do you have to dig through the sidebar in order to find this stuff. You can just go to the overlays menu here, just like in the 3D view. It'll give you a popover and you can enable the stretch display here and anything else that's related to viewing your UVs. So that should be much easier to remember. Now, right now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot. We can zoom in on some of these areas and see that, okay, there is some stretching uh, around a couple of these areas, but overall, it looks pretty good. But that's because it's set to angle. If we set this to area, then we can see that there's a lot of stretching going on down here. So there's two different types. One of them is, of course, angle, um, where we take something and if we were to pull this out, you can see it's going to be more and more stretched. But if we set things to area, then it's going to calculate how large the face should be in relation to all of the other faces in the model. So if we were to take this and take one of these faces here and just hit S and scale it up, then it's going to become really, really stretched according to the area. So what I'm gonna to try to do is decrease the amount of area stretching going on here. Um, so I can either leave that on or just turn it off for now. Either way is fine. Uh, right now, I'll leave this off and then we can, we can check it back later. I'm also going to hit T and hide my toolbars and stuff because I don't really need to see those as I'm working. And we need to think of how we need to split this up in order to lay this out a little bit more flat. So right now it's a big loop, it's going around in a circle, and so we need at least one more cut to enable this to lay more flat. And we could put this cut wherever we want. It could be on the side here, it could be you know, over here, but usually somewhere that makes symmetry is a good idea. 
So we're either going to need to put these on the side, like so, we could do that, or we could do the front and the back. So it's pretty much up to you. I'm going to choose right down the middle here just so that it creates uh, some very obvious symmetry and that the lines are nice and straight in the 3D view, just making it a little bit easier. And I'm going to start with the front here and then we'll see if maybe we should switch it to the top or whatever, or maybe we need a couple seams. We'll just see as we go. But first I'll just select this edge down here and then find whatever, whatever one is the furthest inside. Uh, actually, let me just hold control and left click that edge right there. Remember that tag seam is turned on and pick shortest path. So I can hold control and mark a seam. And that way I can see that this one is the one I need. Hold control and there we go. So now we've split this up into a much larger area and this sits a little bit more flat. So we can see that if we need less stretching, uh, let's turn this option back on. I'll hit N to open up the sidebar. You can see there's still some stretching up here. So maybe we want to do this for the top as well. So we could select uh, this edge right in there. Hold control and select this edge here. And I can see that there's a lot less stretching. There's still a little bit, um, but it's a lot better than it was before. And this is a, an acceptable amount for now. I'll go ahead and turn the stretching view off and hide the sidebar again with N. And now let's do the same thing for the bottom here. First, I'm going to unwrap the back. And that's usually the first thing that I try because it's a little bit better than placing seams directly in the front. Because while seams should be fairly invisible when you're texturing, sometimes they can be apparent. And so we want to make them as invisible as possible and hide them in places that the user or the, the viewer isn't likely to see. So sticking it in the back or in crevices or things like that is generally a good idea. I'll hold control and place a seam and continue going down. And you'll notice that this is still attached uh, over here. So what I'm going to do is hide this bottom section here just for the time being. I'll select one edge and hit control L to select everything that's attached to it. Or alternatively, you could hover your mouse over it and just hit L. Uh, either way works. And then hit H to hide that part of the mesh. And then we can see that there's a little bit more unwrapping we need to do here. Now, I'm not entirely sure why we need faces down here, but I'll trust that this is something that we want on the model. So instead of placing our seam all the way down here, what I'll do is just cut off this entire bottom section entirely by holding Alt and selecting this edge loop that goes around. Right click and mark seam. That way that's going to be its own uh, island over there. And now this is split nicely like so. Okay, so this is looking a bit better, but there's still a little bit too much stretching for my preferences. So what I'll try to do is place a seam right in the front here. I'll select this edge, hold control, select this one up here, right through the middle, and let's see if that helps. And indeed it does, but it still looks like there's a bit too much stretching uh, up here in the back. So I'll try to slice this again, uh, right through the middle, down here, right click and mark seam. I selected that edge loop by, by holding Alt, and this looks a little bit more even all the way around. So there's still some stretching in the back, but it's a tolerable amount. Then I'll hit Alt H to bring the rest of my mesh back. And since we want to focus on just this bottom piece for now, then I'm going to select with B, uh, just box select all this top section here, hit Control L to select everything that are linked to those vertices that I selected, which by the way is the big difference between just hitting L and Control L, because L, even if you have lots of stuff selected, will still only select uh, the object linked to what's under the mouse. So you can see the rest of this orb and the eyes were not selected. So I'll hit Control L instead. Uh, that will select everything we need, except looks like we need to grab those two, Control L, and then uh, again, H to hide. All right, so we have this bottom portion to work with. And so far, it looks pretty good. It is just mostly a circle, so this projection works fairly well. Uh, there is some stretching here on the bottom, but since we're not really going to be looking at this from the bottom, then it's not something I'm too worried about. Uh, I could create you know, another seam right here going around the model, but that's just going to take up a lot of extra space and be hard to pack in with the other islands for very little benefit. So I'm going to ignore that and not worry about that and instead just unwrap these little areas here because these little knobs and spikes are where the majority of the stretching is happening because you can see they're just kind of compressed into these little tiny circles here uh, as it tries to spread this out. 
So what I'll do is I'll just select the edge loop that goes around these areas, right click and mark seam. That's going to separate it out over here. Um, and it's still trying to fold this out. And so the bottom portion is going to be much bigger than what's here in the middle. So what I'll do in order to split this a little bit is just take these edges here, right click and mark seam, and then alt select the edge loop that goes around the top, right click and mark seam again. So now we have the top separated from the sides. I'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Select this edge loop that goes around, right click and mark seam. Select the edges that go up the side on the back. Again, I'm trying to hide this as much as possible, even though it's impossible to completely hide it. Uh, at least the back is better than the front. And then separate out this top section as well by alt selecting that edge loop, right clicking and mark seam. All right, so now for these spikes, I'm gonna do something very similar. Just alt select that edge loop, right click and mark seam. And then I'm going to go up this side. I'll select that bottom edge and then alt select all the way up there. But then if we zoom in and look at this tip here, we can see there's still some stretching. So instead of uh, separating out this top of the tip entirely, that seems like kind of a waste. What I'll do is I'll just hold control and select this farthest middle edge here. And that's just going to split that right through. And it looks like I accidentally selected one more than I wanted. So I'll uh, just split that right through the middle and then you can see that it splits that right down the middle and those are able to spread out and stretch a little bit less. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing over here on the other side. Again, alt select that edge loop, right click, mark seam, select this bottom edge. And this time I'm just going to go directly to this farthest edge here at the top, hold control. And there we go, select that. That's gonna tag that as a seam. And there we go, it's unwrapped uh, nicely on both sides. So we can see if there's anything else that we need to do here. I'll hit Alt and then H in the 3D view to unhide everything. And then since it's all just kind of a mess here, and then I'm going to hide the sphere here by hitting Control L again with an edge selected and then hitting H So not worry about that. And then let's pack everything else. So let's go to select everything with A in the UV editor, then go to UV, Average Islands Scale, and then UV and Pack Islands. All right, so you can see it didn't do a fantastic job of packing. There's still a lot of empty space here, but at least now this gives us a good chance to see if there's any stretching. So I'll hit N to open up my sidebar again, and this transparency makes it really hard to see, so I'll just move this off to the side here. Um, but if we enable stretching under overlays, then we can see that there is some area stretching. Um, but it's all fairly green, so it's not too bad. Uh, as long as it's not like yellow or red, that's where we really have some problems. Um, so there are areas that we can improve here, but again, no curved object is going to be able to lie completely flat. That's just geometrically impossible. So let's switch the area type to angle. Let's see if there's any stretching here. And it seems pretty good. We're getting a little bit around these corners, but that's very, very minor. Uh, and then some around here. So if we wanted to split this area out, then that might be a good idea. And we may as well just do that to get more practice. So let's select uh, the edge loops that go around this detail here. I'll choose that one because it's right in the middle. I'll just hold Alt and select. Let's go along the inside of this inset here, along the outside there, and just kind of hold Alt and Shift and continue selecting the edge loops that Go along this detail and then right click and mark seam. Okay, then we need to follow that over here and it's kind of hard to see. And by the way, if you're getting really close to meshes like this and you're finding it hard to see and like uh, the, the view clips off, well then you can hit N to open up your sidebar, go down to view and just make sure that your view clipping is something that's appropriate. So if my view clip is too high, like 0.5, uh, you can see that if I get close to this, I just can't see it. Uh, I get, gets clipped away. So I might want to set this to something like 0.05 and then we could send the end to something much smaller uh, like you know 250 and that way it's a little bit more uh, appropriate for whatever we're working on. Okay so now we can actually see this. So hold alt and select this edge loop and I think that goes all the way to the other side. Uh, so we should be good. Yep right click and mark seam and that's going to split out that area. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but we may need to split out these edges as well. If you find it easier, you can also do this in the UV editor. I'll hold Alt and select this edge loop that runs all the way down there. 
and just go to UV and mark seam. That's going to split that open. And I'll do the same thing on this side as well. So you can see here areas where there's like a junction and there's three or more directions all coming into one. That's where it has a really hard time uh, with that stretching. So hold Alt and select that edge loop there, UV and mark seam. There you can see that if it's uh, splitting off into four directions like this instead, then it's able to lay down flat. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I think we're set except for the face. Uh, we haven't done that yet. And this is because I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So let's just hide everything except for that for now. So I'll just left click and drag and box select all of this. Control L to select and then H to hide. So now we're looking at just the face and we're going to project it from view. Now if we do this from front view, I just hit one on my number pad. I could select everything, hit U and project from view. And that way it's going to take this face and just make a carbon copy of that right in the UV editor uh, from whichever angle I'm looking at. So I can do that from this angle or whatever. But if I'm from front view, then this gives us a pretty good uh, projection here that we're able to look at. And I could go ahead and work with this. Uh, this seems pretty fine, but uh, I'd like to get dead on as much as I can for these faces. So what I'm gonna do is just use a viewport navigation trick that I find really, really helpful sometimes is I'm going to select uh, whichever faces I think represent the front of this the best, just like some of these faces here, and then hit Shift 7 on my number pad. So 7 is usually top view, but if you hit Shift 7, it's going to be top in relation to the normal of the face. And since multiple faces are selected, it's averaging out those normals, and then we're getting uh, just the average of the direction that these faces are pointing. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, it's a good trick. So let's hit Control L to select everything that's linked to those faces, U, and project from view. And now we can see that we're getting a nice flat version of this. It's not entirely flat, but it's about as close as we're gonna get. So we're going to have some stretching around the sides here. You can see as I move this around, uh, these faces are gonna be stretched. Let's see if we can get one of those plus signs. All right, yeah, you can see on, on this side over here that this is being stretched all the way down. Um, but since we're gonna be looking at this from like way over here, uh, mostly dead on, it's going to be so minor that I'm really not going to worry about it. So if this is something that you do want to change, then we could absolutely make seams going around this object. And just like we've done previously, then we'd be able to get rid of that. But since I just want a quick result and something that will just work in the majority of cases without needing to complicate things with more seams, again, more seams means that each island over here gets to take up less space in the image. And the more islands that there are, the less texture pixel density and so it's always going to be a balancing act between stretching and the amount of seams on an object. So just keep things very simple and like easy to paint on and things like that. Uh, I'm just going to project these from view and not really worry about the tiny amount of stretching going along the sides. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'll select some faces that I think represent uh, the front of it. Hit shift and seven on my number pad uh, to snap to the top of those faces. Control L, U and project from view. Then I'll go ahead and do that for the rest of these objects. Shift 7, Control L, U, and project from view. Shift 7, Control L, U, and project from view. And one, a couple more times. Uh, Shift 7, Control L, U, and project from view. All right, now since I'm kind of at this crazy angle and it's a little bit hard to navigate, I'll hit one on my number pad just to go back to front view, and that way the navigation will go back to normal. All right, now I'll hit Alt H to bring back all of my other pieces, and I, I will hide this sphere again, Control L and H to hide, because I don't want that to be part of the pack. Uh, and then what I'll do is select everything with A, either in the UV editor or in the 3D view here, and then go to UV and Average Islands Scale and then UV and pack islands. All right, so now we're mostly done and this gives us a pretty good unwrap. You can see if we go to object mode here, we can see this with subsurf enabled and this is looking pretty nice. Uh, we have a good unwrap, but it's not taking up as much space in the UV editor as it really could be. So what I'm gonna do is move these islands around and make them a little bit bigger so that we're making the best use out of the space as we can. 
So the reason that the default packing algorithm uh, isn't always the best is because it assumes all of these islands are just squares. So the algorithm uses the bounding box uh, of these different islands. So it assumes that this island is shaped like this. And it doesn't take any of the concave features into account. So that makes it kind of inefficient here. And that's unfortunate, but something that we'll just have to fix manually. Now, there are a couple ways to speed this up, which I'll talk about later on. Uh, so if this is incredibly tedious for you, then don't worry. I'll show you how to automate it later. But this is definitely good practice. So now what I'll do is turn off selection sync and in the UV editor, turn off live unwrap. And that way I don't have to worry about my UVs jumping around or moving. If I happen to accidentally mark another seam or anything like that, uh, any little tiny mistakes won't make catastrophic changes for us here. So let's just go ahead and select everything in the 3D view and move these all around and place these in a way that makes sense. So we're just kind of playing Tetris with these pieces here. So I'll select everything with A and just move them off to the side and I'll hide my toolbar and all that other stuff uh, and just select one of these at a time. I have my island selection mode enabled and just select one set of things. Um, I'll select these guys, scale them up a little bit and see if we can find a way to pack these uh, in a way that takes up a little bit less space. So since we're able to actually use these concave features here, Again, we want to give a little bit of margin for each of these. We don't want to like line them up directly. We're going to want some bleed on the textures, but let's say we do this. It'll take some fiddling to uh, find whatever, whatever method works the best. But once you have something that you're reasonably happy with, then we can move on to the other pieces. And generally I pack the most important pieces first as the larger ones and then the least important or smaller pieces last. So for example, like this piece down here represents this bottom that we're really almost never gonna see. Uh, in fact, since this is just cut out here, this is something that we, we should never actually see. So I'm gonna just shrink it down pretty small um, and not worry about that for now. So that can go in pretty much last. And then this piece also a fairly important one, so I'll scale that up a little bit just to give it more texture resolution and place this off to the side here. And then let's do the face next because that is a, a very important section. So I'll take all of the pieces that are corresponding to the face. Actually, this one I'll move off to the side here. Um, okay, so all of the, the face pieces, I'll grab them by selecting those in the 3D view. Hit Control L. I can move these down here just so that I can see which ones are related to the face and then select everything again. Okay, so I'll take these and I'll scale them up just to give them more texture resolution because they are pretty important, more important than a lot of the other pieces. And then I can start moving these around. So I try to place things if I can in a pretty human readable way. So I'll place these eyes roughly how they're positioned on the 3D model. Of course, it doesn't have to be exact. I'll scale them up a little bit. But this way, at least if somebody is looking at this texture, it's very obvious that, oh, okay, those are the eyes, uh, rather than having them, you know, rotated in some random way. Now, if it's really efficient to rotate them, you know, in some direction, and it's, it's easier to do that, uh, then, you know, of course, go ahead. Um, but generally having things appear as they do on the model is good practice. Okay, so I'll just stick that there for now, and if we need to change it later, then it's not a big deal. These triangles look like they'll fit quite nicely in some of the areas uh, around these larger pieces. Again, we can scale them up a little bit if we want, just to give them a little bit more texture resolution if it's not hurting anything else. Again, just think about this as if you're playing Tetris and it becomes a little bit more fun. Now I mentioned in a previous video that for straight edges you really want to place things about as straight up and down as possible. That definitely helps because the lines of the pixel will line up with the lines on the image. But with curved UV shells there's not really any way to do that anyway, uh, so these I'm not going to worry about rotating in, in different directions like this. Um, but if this was you know, a hard surface object with straight lines, I'd want to generally make sure that uh, the lines of the UVs are going to line up with the lines on the texture.
with the pixels with the pixels on the texture. And you can see here things are getting a little bit cramped, so we're going to have to shift things around a bit. And I'll maybe move some of these guys out of the way. See if we can come up with a better solution here. Okay, so it looks like I won't be able to give the eyes the exact same layout as on the 3D model, but this still works and gives us plenty of space to work with. Okay, once we have that laid out, then we can call this a job well done. Of course, we could still tweak things a little bit. This isn't quite perfect, but it's uh, a whole lot better and definitely acceptable to start painting on or add textures to or anything like that. So hopefully that was a helpful walkthrough for how to start UV editing. Once you're done, you can hit tab to go back into object mode. Then I'll hit slash to bring back everything else. And I'd really encourage you to try this for yourself. So give this a shot on this object here, this shader ball by Kent, or by practicing on some of your own projects. Once you've gotten more comfortable with UV unwrapping, then let's head to the next lesson.